All right, so now we get to do the fun part. We're gonna do some basic rigging. We're gonna rig the light and the shadow so it works well together. And we're gonna do that using some basic expressions and some basic math. Notice I'm saying basic, so don't freak out. It's gonna be very basic. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna create a global light direction. For that, we're gonna go to controls, this controls null layer, and we're gonna select it. We're gonna go to effect controls panel. We're gonna lock this in so we can see it the whole time. And we're gonna add an angle control. To do that, just right click, go to expression controls and click on angle control and in here we're going to call this one light direction okay so this is going to be our global light direction right now it doesn't really do anything because by itself it's just a menu item it doesn't really do anything unless you attach something to it so that's exactly what we're going to do and we're going to go to this ball we're going to collapse this down and you see this master properties and if you saw the first video you uh, saw me setting these up and we have this light direction of this ball right here so we can control where the light is hitting it so we can tell this light direction to be linked to that one by just pick whipping like this done that's all you have to do so now we can control this light direction from here so it's like a global light direction so that is it for the light direction now let's do the same thing for the shadow so if i set this direction at 45 degrees in other words it's hitting the ball at 45 degrees from this side it's positive right i want for this shadow to be on this side. And when I move it to another side, I want it to kind of move with it. Let me undo this. So how do we make that happen? So let's do this. We're gonna go and select this ball shadow, press E to reveal drop shadow. And we're gonna go and we're gonna work with this direction. Now, naturally you're probably thinking, hey, just parent to it. Well, let's do that. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna parent to it. And if I move, you can see it's working, but not quite. So if I go to 45 degrees, you can see that the light is right about here somewhere, right? It hits it and we have a hot spot on this side, but naturally you would expect the shadow to be on this side and it's not, it's on the same side as our light. And you can see when we move it, it does the same thing. So what we need to do, we need to do some minor adjustments for our shadow. So let's go into this direction here and we're gonna do some basic expressions. So right now it's pointing to this angle control and we don't want, you know, it's pointing to the angle, but to be exact, right now After Effects is kind of guessing and saying, oh, you're, you want the value. But we want to be more specific. I don't want it to guess. I'm going to say we want period value. So we were pointing to the angle control, but angle control has different properties. It has a name property, but we want a value property. So that's what we want. So now when I click away, nothing happens. It's just we're more specific now. We are referencing this value right here. So what we want to do, we want to take this value. Right now it's in positive 45 degrees. We want it to go into negative. So we want it to be negative 45, which will flip it to the other side. So to do that, you can either just put like a negative value or like negative sign right in front of it. Or you can say something like times negative one. And when you do that, when you click away, it says... The current value 45 times negative one is negative 45 and notice the shadow went on this side so now when i adjust the global light direction you can see we're hitting it from this side and the shadow goes on the opposite side so it's working fine so we have done that that's good i'm going to set it to zero so it's hitting from the top the shadow is in the center so it's working well now next what we're going to do when i select this ball when i move it side to side I want for this shadow to move with the ball on the X, on the width, left and right. So how do we make that happen? Very simple. So we're going to select the ball and also the ball shadow, select both of them. And then we're going to press P to reveal the position property. So right now, position property of ball and ball shadow, both of them have X and Y, both of those properties married together in one property. Now, I want to split them. I can do, you know, I can split them using expressions, but we can easily do that doing this so select the position property of the ball and control select the other position property so we have two of them selected and then just right click on it and click on separate dimensions so when you do that now we put x and y on separate properties which is very handy so now we can link this x position of our shadow to the x position of our ball we can just do this done so now when i move the ball you can see the shadow moves with it now the cool thing is when i move up and down the Y position doesn't move because it's not linked. It's set to zero. So that's perfect. All right. Now, let me zero everything out. Make sure it goes back to the center. So now, here's what I want to do. When I move this ball up and down, I want for the scale of this shadow to increase as well. How do we make that happen? Well, pretty simple. Kind of. <laughs> Let's select this ball shadow and press S to reveal the scale property. 
and we're going to alt click on the stopwatch to create an expression. So in here, we're going to do what we did here. We split the X and the Y visually, but we need to do that in the code. We want to split the X and the Y so that we can tackle each separately. And to do that, we're going to do some basic expressions. So I'm going to over explain because I want you to get this. So we're going to create a basic variable, just a made up English, just X. It can be anything. I'm just going to say X right here. Just type X and I'll tell it to be something. I'm going to say X, you're going to be, and I'm going to say the first value. And I'm going to type value, which it refers, when I say value, it means both first and second. But I want the first one. So to do that, we need to be more specific. So we're going to go to the end of it here and we're going to enter square brackets. And in square brackets, we would enter the index value of which value that we want. So if I want the first value, you would think it would be index one, but it's actually zero because in After Effects, it starts at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. So the first value is not one, it's zero. So in here, we're going to enter zero. Okay. So X actually equals this value. That's all we did here. Okay. Then we're going to go to the next line. We're going to say Y, which is a, another made up variable. And the reason why I said Y, because X, Y, we're, we're going to refer to that one. So to grab this value, to point to it, I would just say value. And then I would define which index I want. I want index one. Remember, zero, one. Okay. So we are pointing to this. So Y means this. All right. So now we have X and Y defined. And the next thing we need to do, we need to marry both of them in the way to where it speaks the same language, because this, the final outcome is actually two values. But if I put one number, it wouldn't match. So the outcome of this and the outcome of that, they have to match. You have to speak the same language. So we have to create square brackets again, and we're going to apply X to the first value and apply Y to the second. And to do that, we're just going to do it in here in square brackets. We're going to say X comma Y. That's all that is. So X, which is the first value, is going to be applied to the first value, and Y is going to be applied to the second value. I hope you are able to see this. It's very simple if you just think about the process. All right, so when I click away, nothing really happens because it's doing the same thing. We just kind of, we just took the same thing we had before. We kind of broke it apart into two different lines so that we can apply code separately. So in here, we're going to create another variable right above here. And remember, variable is just made up English. We're going to say something like ball y position. Totally made up. So I want ball y position. So that's why I wrote ball y position. It can be anything. It can be Sergey. Don't overthink this stuff. Yeah, it's just made up. So we're going to say ball y position. You're going to be married to this. You're going to be y position. So ball y, you are from now on when I reference this, I really mean this value. In fact, we're going to say period value. Okay. So, so far we're good. So now I'm going to use this ball Y position variable and I'm going to do this. I'm going to go over here to, to X scale. And when this ball goes up, I want to add basically for the value to increase. And naturally you would, you would say plus uh, ball Y position, right? You would just do this and it, it works. But watch this. The reason why it doesn't work is because of this. When I pull on it, you can see it actually scales down and then it scales up. It flips it. So we need to go in the opposite direction because when you move up the ball up, notice the value here is actually a negative value. So because of that, when you say current value plus negative, it, it does the opposite. So we want to do instead of plus, we want to say subtract. And now it works fine. So watch this. Let's set it to zero. So when I move on this, it's working. Good. Now we want to do the same thing to the Y. We want to also grow this. So we're going to say the same thing, minus this. Obviously it breaks, but here's why. So the starting point actually works fine, but as soon as we start pulling on this, it's, it's not working. And the reason why, because Remember, the scale of the second value is this value divided by 10. And that's how we get it. So that's why it maintains that shape. It's, you know, 60 and 6. So we have to maintain the same aspect ratio when we apply this to the second value. So we want to apply the same y, ball y position, but we want it to be uh, divided by 10 to maintain the same position, right? So when I click away and when I move on this, 
you can see it does maintain the same position. So it is working. I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say here. So that's all that is. It's just to maintain the same shape. That's why we did this because this uh, ratio needs to be the same when we apply everything else to it. Okay. So now, obviously, if I pull on this, you can see this ball is like the shadow is way too big and uh, I need to tone it down some. So how do I do that? Now, you can do it a number of different ways. You can do it individually here, but we already have this ball Y position and we're going to go to the end of it here. And we're just going to say, hey, let's take your value and let's divide it by like two. Give me half of that. And, you know, then it gives us something different. And you can kind of play with this to see which size you feel comfortable. Like size will give you something like this. Um, now, if I take it down to 10 or up to 10, that's where I'm going to go with. It actually gives me what I want. And it might be too small for you, but you have to keep in mind we're going to be feathering it as well. So it's going to get bigger even more. So that to me feels natural, feels good enough. So that's all I'm going to do. So now if I grab the ball right here, if I move it, you can see it does increase. I can move it side to side. Now, the last thing we need to do is adjust the uh, feather. So we're going to do this right here. So to do that, we're going to select this ball shadow, press E to reveal drop shadow. We're going to go to softness. So we're going to select this, hit S twice to solo it. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to alt click on the stopwatch. Remember, we're going to create the same variable ball Y position. We're going to tell it to be this ball Y and we want it to be the value. So we're going to say period value. And here's what we need to do here. We're just going to say the current value, whatever that was, 150, right? If I click away, it just gives me 150. But we want to subtract ball Y position, this one. So now when I move on it, you can see it blurries it big time. You can see the value changes. So that's really it as far as rigging the light and the shadow. So let's zero everything out and let's test things out. If I go to controls and then move on the light, it does work. I can move it up and down. It's it's working as well. So that's how easy it is to rig the light and the shadow in After Effects. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about the stretchy property, how to rig that up. So definitely check that out and I'll see you there.